Okay, in this video we're going to be looking at our learning goal of square roots and cube roots. So in the previous video we looked at um, squaring numbers and cubing numbers or uh, doing numbers to the power of something. So now this is the opposite and it's important that we understand these three things here. So by the end of this lesson you need to be able to define what a square and cube root is. You need to be able to calculate these, so a square and cube roots. And I'm also going to give you a big hint in if you can understand the first 10 square numbers, it's going to be easy for you to be able to calculate these uh, easier. So let's get into this first one, just finding what a square and cube root is. So uh, everything in mass has an opposite. Okay, So we know the opposite to addition is subtraction. We know the opposite to multiplication is division. Okay, So the opposite to, uh, let's just say, squaring a number, so we know that 2 squared equals 2 times 2, which equals 4. The opposite to squaring a number is square rooting a number. And this symbol for square rooting looks like this. It's similar to a division, long division symbol, but it sort of has that little tick at the top there. So this symbol here means square rooting. Now what happens here is that if we have the square root of 4, all that basically means is that a number times itself equals 4. So what times what is going to equal 4? Now we know that the opposite for um, 4 or square rooting is squaring. So 4, the answer is going to be 2. So again, so square rooting means that uh, a number times itself is going to equal that number. Let's just look at another example. So if we did the square root of 49, we need to think a number times itself is going to equal 49. So you really need to be up with your multiplication tables. And I know that 7 times 7 equals 49. So the square root of 49 equals 7. Okay, so next we need to make sure that we also know what cube rooting is. So I'm going to pause it here and give us another question. Okay, so now we need to make sure we know what cube rooting is. And again, that's the opposite to a cubing a number. Okay, so we might have 2 cubed it's going to be the opposite to cubing a number. Now the way that we look at the we write this down the symbol for cube root is again that squaring symbol but you actually put a tiny 3 just above that number. So this means the cube root when there's a tiny 3 just above that symbol it means the cube root. That means that the answer in here is going to be a number that is times by itself, not once, twice, but three times. So let's use this one as an example. Two times, this would be two times two times two, which we know equals four times two, which we know will equal eight. So the cube root of eight is going to equal two. So I'll give you another example. Let's put in the cube root of, let's say, 27. So a number times itself three times is going to equal 27. So I know that three times three equals nine, nine times three equals 27, so the answer will be three. Okay, so square rooting and cube rooting is the opposite to uh, squaring a number and cubing a number. So we know we can define it, we need to be able to calculate. I'm going to give you a quick uh, clue here of how we can make sure we can recall especially our square numbers. So here, we have the first 10 squared numbers. So one, one squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, etc., all the way down to 10. If you know these 10 numbers, you're going to be easily be able to square root these numbers here. So I know that 10 times 10 equals 100. So if I see the square root of 100, I know the answer is going to be 10. If I see 36, I know that the square root of 36 is going to be 6. So your task here is I want you to copy down the first 10 square numbers and see if you can recall them or memorise them. This will help you when you're doing your squared numbers because it makes it quick and easy. Now most of the times if we don't have a number here, just say we have the square root of 10, it's not going to be an even number. So using most, most numbers are going to have a decimal, so you need to be able to use your calculator. In the next video, we'll look at how we can actually calculate these square roots and cube roots using a calculator. Thanks, guys.